I'd only been in the news business about a half a dozen years when Ronald Reagan had a moment, the Patco moment, the one that's described in Frank Gaffney's latest uh, piece. Frank, of course, is the founder and president of the Center for Security Policy. And it was a moment. Do you know, Frank, I'm so glad you referred to the Patco strike because the air traffic controllers going on strike, because I hear echoes of that even all these years later, even though it happened decades ago, because people will say, well, we ought to treat this the way Reagan did with the air traffic controllers. If they have to be removed in leg irons, take them out of there. And, and that moment was so significant uh, in what the president did and, and the fact that he didn't knuckle under that you used it as a great metaphor for the position that uh, President Trump finds himself in today. Yeah, thanks. I, I hope we're going to see that um, in his speech tonight, uh, that he's going to demonstrate uh, what proved to be really a defining moment for President Reagan. Um, and there were a lot of people, uh, as with this episode over building the wall and border security and uh, the Democrats insisting they won't, uh, that, that, you know, are reminiscent of the kind of pushback that Ronald Reagan got, you know, oh, the air traffic system will collapse or um, you're, you know, being beastly to these, um, you know, public servants and they're, they're terribly overworked and underpaid and on and on and on. He said, no, um, there was a fundamental principle at stake. And for Ronald Reagan, it was federal government employees must not strike, particularly in such a sensitive line of work as managing the air traffic control system with millions of passengers' lives on the line. For Donald Trump, there's another very important principle at stake, and that is, as he says, and he couldn't be more right, as you know, Lars, we've talked about this for years, you don't have a sovereign nation without secure borders. And we have a particularly porous one, on the south of this country. Uh, the north one is turning out to be increasingly a problem, I have to say, but the one on the south at the moment is manifestly a security and a public safety problem. And he's absolutely right to say we need to secure it and a barrier, a fence, a border wall, call it what you will, um, it has to be built securely and in a way that is going to deter large numbers of people, not everybody, but large numbers of people who otherwise feel that they can get here uh, with impunity and be taken well care of if they do. Well, and, and I, I've had people say, look, he won't he won't do this and he won't do that. The fact is, he said, I'll negotiate. Sit down with me. And I heard Chuck Schumer in an interview last week because Senator Schumer doesn't do interviews on this program. Uh, say, we are not going to give him the wall. That's a non-starter. Simply no, no compromise, no negotiation, no nothing. So what I keep asking people, even some of the conservatives, I've had border agents call me who are on furlough right now, and they've said, well, you know, we're going to go without paychecks. And, and the first paycheck they'll miss is this Friday. So we're, we're not exactly looking at starving federal employees at this moment. But I can understand if they anticipate no check going in the bank on Friday, that that'll probably create problems for some of them. But I've asked them, how, how, how firmly do you want him to stick to his convictions? And if he said, I will do this if necessary to get what I promised the American people and what they voted for, then, uh, then do you want him to stick to his convictions or do you want him to cave in like so many people do in Washington, D.C., and frankly, in state capitals in the 50 states? Yeah. Well, the truth of the matter is that I, I, I'm sure there are some Border Patrol officers who uh, are like an awful lot of other federal employees who are affected by this uh, shutdown. And this, it's not every one of them by any means, but it's uh, it's a, sub, a relatively small subset of the total federal workforce. But I think the vast majority of those Border Patrol folks absolutely get the principle that Donald Trump is protecting and the people that he is protecting. And therefore, at least that that population is is going to be strongly in his camp. And I think an awful lot of other Americans are, too. You know, I, I was listening to a, another program that will go. The host will go unnamed here. But he was talking the other night about uh, the other afternoon, I guess, about the fact that, um, you know, 
some of the recent polling indicates that 90 plus percent of the American people agree illegal immigration is a problem, including overwhelming numbers of Democrats. Now, yeah. I guess the, the, the differences arise when you ask the question, so what are you going to do about it? But when we have that kind of consensus, Lars, that this is a problem, and I don't think they specified a national security problem, a public health problem, a public safety problem. Let's face it, it's all of the above and an economic problem to boot. That's the kind of thing that the president has to stand on principle and insist, as Ronald Reagan did with PATCO, this will not be allowed to uh, go down the way the Democrats are insisting that it go. You know, it's funny, Frank, because I began this hour by citing, uh, and the poll was a morning consult poll, and it was done within the last week. And it says that 80 percent of the American public either calls it a crisis, a slightly larger number says it's a crisis in the 40s, and in the high 30s think it's a problem. Only 12 percent of the people in that poll say it is not a problem at all. Now, if it's only 12 percent, that's a fraction of all the Democrats in the country, probably none of the Republicans and not too many of the independents in this country uh, don't see it as a problem. Twelve percent don't yeah. see it as a problem, and and and, and you know, and and uh, uh, eight, eighty-eight percent of them do see it as a problem right. of, at some level. That's that's a pretty powerful statement, isn't it? This is what's so infuriating: is that we're endlessly told by the proponents of let's call it what it is, open borders, that the American people don't. Uh, support the president on this. They don't care about this issue. That's that's just manifestly not true. And more to the point, even if nobody did care about it, it would still be a problem, an economic, a national security, a public health, a public safety problem. And Lars, I, when you have both, I think, the rightness of the policy and the public sentiment behind it. This is the sort of thing that the president should stand on. And I, I must tell you, I am so gratified that he has, after after seemingly being uh, willing to roll with it earlier uh, last year. It's just incredibly heartening. And I think an awful lot of people, hopefully tonight, will uh, again see the measure of the man and come into line behind him on this. I, I pray that will be the case. I think I, I hope so, too. And I hope he's very persuasive. I hope that Stephen Miller wrote his comments tonight. I kind of wish I kind of wish the president would sit there in the Oval Office with a little visual backup. I wish he'd run the tape of prominent Democrats over the decades, including some who are still in office today, saying, I will support I will fund a wall. I will vote for a wall. Because yep. that's the most ridiculous part of this, that you have Democrats today who say we won't vote for it because it's coming for Trump. But five years ago, we voted for border wall funding in the U.S. Senate by a majority and we passed it. And uh, and now we say we oppose the idea because it's coming from this man. Frank, it is a pleasure to have you on as always. And thank you so much for the time. My pleasure. Yeah, thank that's you. Frank Gaffney from the Center for Security Policy.